my name is Emily. And I am a faithful follower of Christ. I'm in my son's truck. I love this truck. I've never even driven it before or hardly been in it because he's quite protective of it, but it needed to go to the dealership this morning and he said he'd rather babysit some siblings than take it. So here I am in my son's truck underneath this Office Max sign, which is a sacred spot for me. It's where I have given out and give out. I'd like some AC and I have no idea. Look at this. This is what it looks like to be in a 17 year old kid's vehicle. It looks like a big screen, a digital screen. AC. Okay. Kids, they're so techy. Um, I'm underneath the sign where I gave out free produce many, many times. And Franklin told me yesterday, he said, um, mama, let's do that again. I said, I'd love to, if they call me, uh, if the produce auction calls me with produce to give away, they consider me a food bank and let me have the pleasure and honor and privilege of going there and getting loads of good nutrition and giving it out to people in need, people that are hungry. I'm at Office Max. They're working on the poster. They're scanning it in now. I'm going to go ahead and do this video to explain April, the theme. Maybe you already saw it on the thumbnail that I just created while I was waiting in line at Office Max. Um, and also the woe is she mode of operation at this point. The list up underneath the woe is she videos. That's going to refresh. I'll go ahead and talk, talk about that. That's going to refresh monthly now. So God has recently, like I said in the free printable video, God recently downloaded. That's what it feels like to me. He downloads sermons or ideas or um he downloaded the next five months into my brain about a month ago. And I was like, oh my goodness. Okay, we're back to the printables because that was a hook he let me off of, which trust me, I want to be hooked on him and by him. I don't want to wiggle out of work, but I'm always excited when he leads me into ministries and then out of ministries because every ending is a new beginning. Am I right? So, um, and I just, uh, I love a, a real variety of, um, need meeting, a variety of ministry. And, um, so a couple months ago, January to be specific, I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm covered up. I'm covered up. I'm covered up with, um, I was just at capacity and I prayerfully discerned that God was telling me not to do the printables anymore. So I made a big announcement, said I wasn't going to do it. Apologized to a couple people that I had already told that I would. But like I said, I, I aim to, um, consider people, but be obedient to the spirit because I'm no good for no one. If I'm not being led by him. Um, and sometimes he has me model apologizing. I don't know. I don't know why he has me do all the things he has me do, but I trust it's, it's him. And, um, I trust him period. And I, I'm in a very real relationship with him. So I feel comfortable and confident being spirit led. And I was just telling Greg a minute ago that a life of ministry is truly a life of ministry. Don't be intimidated by the word ministry. It just means to meet needs. But God has me involved in lots of physical, tangible ministry lately with people in front of my face. So I wasn't exactly sure where YouTube was going, but I love this ministry and I love you ladies. Um, my sisters in Christ that are an absolute blessing. This is a blessing, blessing, a win-win. It's mutually beneficial. I, I, um, I want you to know that, that's for sure. So about a month ago, God downloaded all of the next five months of printables into my brain. and. Um, that's April, May, June, July, and August, which will complete an entire calendar year because I have all the printables um, from September on. So I suppose we could use these again next year. I don't know, I might. Um, here is, I got these out the other day. I'll show you an example. Um, by the way, welcome to this channel. Welcome to this journey. This is Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. Um, It is, how does that start off? Two are better than one. Because if one falls down, 
they have someone else to lift them up and they have a better return for their labor. And I have such a passion and heart for women, moms. It's what I know, it's the position God has put me in and I want us to lift and encourage one another because we have weights on us. I prayed with a woman in a hair salon on Monday. I held hands with her and prayed with her because she, when people find out I'm involved in ministry, just like happens in this sacred spot in this parking lot, I have posters that say God loves you and John 14, 6 and John 3, 16. And when they find out that I'm doing what I'm doing in the name of Jesus, they share with me and I am honored to receive it. Um, it, it takes an emotional and spiritual toll on me. I recently read in first Kings about how natural and normal it is for, um, once you've had a sort of a mountaintop spiritual experience that there is a, um, there's a period of time afterward that feels, it can feel depressing and discouraging, but really I would call that exhaustion and we need to refresh and refuel and replenish. But people share with me often about things they're struggling with and I pray with them and for them and, and God has given me the gift of being able to encourage and it's my joy to do that because I am a realist and I like to, I like to operate from a position of reality and joy. James tells us in chapter one, verse two, to count it all as joy, the trials and tribulations, because God uses these to uh, solidify and mature and perfect our faith. And when I see how dark this world is, it inspires me to be increasingly obedient and bold, sharing the good news of Christ. The darker the darkness, the lighter the light shines. And I think it's oftentimes in periods of extreme darkness that people become awake and aware to the reality of Christ. That this world is messed up and this world is twisted and backwards because this world is being ruled by Satan. And I mean that seriously. Again, reality and joy. I can say that with a smile on my face. It's nothing new. God tells us, and this is one of the verses on the poster, John 16, 33. In this world, you will have trouble. This is Jesus speaking. You will have trouble. Not you might. You will. You will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. 1 John 4, 4. He who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. Well, who's in the world? Satan. Who's in me? God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that you're a temple of the Holy Spirit? So, it's my joy and my honor to receive the weight that people are carrying. And you know what? I'm having a moment right now realizing if God is in me and they're sharing it with me, they're really sharing it with God that's in me. So it's not, it doesn't even take quite the toll that people sometimes seem to assume it takes on me, Emily, because I know that I can save no one. People don't need Emily. I say often, if you see love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, that's Galatians 5, 22 through 23. If you see those things in my life, you're seeing him, not me. That is not the fruit of Emily. That is the fruit of the Spirit. That is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Jesus tells us, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. If you're carrying a weight that feels heavy, maybe too heavy, you're likely carrying a burden you were never meant to carry. First Peter 5, 7, God tells us, cast, don't just hand over, cast your anxieties on the Lord, for he cares for you. He wants you to hand it over. He wants weights lifted. Ministry has a heaviness to it because I move about life aware of the pain that people are in. 
I sense it and they share it with me. So when I prayed with this woman at the salon the other day after she shared with me concerns that she had about her husband and she had about her kids, and she shared these with me laughing. She was, she was actually doing my hair. And we were laughing about it and um, by the end I thought, I shared Proverbs 31:25 with her. She is clothed in strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. The without fear part is very important. We're not supposed to be operating from a position of fear. I don't want to make the decisions that I make, the choices that I make, to be coming from fear because that's trajectory changing. I walk forward in faith in Him, with confidence in Him, not me. So she shared these things with me, but by the end I said, can I share Proverbs 31, 25 with her? I actually had a, um, a bracelet with me. I gave it to her. And then I said, girl, can I pray? She is a friend of mine. I said, can I pray before I leave? And she said, oh, please, please, that'd be wonderful. So we held hands and prayed. And when I opened my eyes after the prayer, I said, I don't have the answers. He does. I'm going to pray for wisdom and guidance, discernment, leadership for you, clarity and courage. And when I was finished with that prayer, I opened my eyes and I didn't realize it, but she had been weeping. Yesterday, I prayed with a, a girl in the parking lot at the YMCA. She was telling me about how her past had been really not so great, but she's come to know the Lord. And she said, if you hear anything about me from my past, I said, girl, we all have a past. Don't even worry about that. You move forward. I told her how I recently read to the women in the jail, and before I got there, I told the jailer, I really would rather not know what they've done. Now, if I were gonna minister them on a regular basis and I were gonna help meet their needs, I would need to know if someone had murdered someone versus someone had gotten a lot of speeding tickets because the murderer has much more severe needs that need to be met. I'm no professional counselor I don't claim to be. So I, I want them to get what they need from who they need it from. If God has me come there to speak truth and life to them, I do think, and the jailer said it probably would be important that I knew um, a little bit more about who I was speaking with so that I could more adequately give them what they need. Again, someone who's in there for parking tickets, someone that's in there for traffic violations, someone that's in there for um, even drugs or, or shoplifting, is not struggling with the same things that the person's in there that um, uh, there's currently someone in there that's um, a pedophile, someone that's murdered someone. I didn't know who I'd be reading to. I didn't know if they'd have the orange jumpsuit or the navy blue jumpsuit, and there's a big difference between the two. But when I went in on Christmas Eve to read to them, I told the jailer, I said, I'd rather not know what they did. And I said, I don't need to know what they did. They don't need to know what I did. We all need to know what Jesus did. That's the point and that's the direction I want us all looking. Hebrews 12, one through two, throw off everything that hinders us, run with endurance and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. So I told this girl in the parking lot, I said, girl, whatever you have done, you are now living a new life. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the old is gone and the new is here. And I said, Satan knows your name, but he calls you by your sin. God knows your sin, but he calls you by your name. And she cried in the parking lot with me. And then we prayed. I just met with a man while I was waiting on the truck to be worked on. And he saw us reading my Bible and asked me what I was studying. And I told him about... Um, I was preparing for this video and I was also working on reading Second Kings for my Bible reading group and and we started talking about the the world and the shape it's in right now and he talked about um, it was a blessing for me to hear what he had to say he's an associate pastor and he was talking about um, the bear the eagle the lion and the leper maybe at least the bear the eagle and the lion and by the grace of God, I was sitting there with enough, enough brain power to make a quick acronym to remember that. The bear, the eagle, and the lion. And he was talking about how Revelation right now, if you read Revelation, it's a, lot, it's a little bit like reading the New York Times. Things are happening now that Revelation has, has predicted will be part of the end times. I had a pastor recently say, this is not the end 
but this is the beginning of the end. There are things happening right now that Daniel predicted long ago. Russia being represented by the bear. Countries in Europe, I want to say England, being represented by the lion. And Daniel predicted that from the lion, an eagle would be torn from the lion's hands and given a man's heart. The United States is represented by an eagle. And the man's heart is, is the representation of our independence. Global monetary systems. A global network of currency. These things were predicted as part of the end times. Luke 12, 48, too much is given, much is expected, and I've never been more grateful to have been born not of my choosing or anything I could have possibly done, but to have been born exactly into the family that I was born to, born into, and into the country that I've been born into. Born into? Born into? I've never been more aware that in God's sovereignty, He allowed me to be born right here in this body, able to do all that I'm, I'm doing. I like that song, God, there's these horrible things happening. Why don't you do something? And he said, I did, I created you. So I wanna do my part and be obedient to him, especially in this time. Esther 414, perhaps you were created for such a time as this. I share that story about what happened in the salon on Monday and the YMCA parking lot on Tuesday and in the dealership on Wednesday. God has me involved in so much tangible ministry and I'm so grateful for it. And that's why I really don't know exactly where we're going with this YouTube channel, but I'm so glad to share with you these next five months. This is how it's gonna work in the Woe Is She readings. They come out every Wednesday. I'll be putting one out today. Up underneath the Woe Is She readings is a list. And I say, join us. Join us just means that I'll put your name on the list and you'll be prayed for daily. For sure by Susan Miller. Susan, you're a saint. You're an asset to this ministry. I'm going to start that list fresh every month, especially for, I'm getting a call. Yay, my hardwood and tile are in. The renovating is just in full force. Um, the what was she readings, the list will start over every month on the first of the month. This will be good for especially Susan because she's wanting to know who really is in a season right now of wanting and needing prayer. All of us, right? Me, count me in. Um, but it'll, it'll just let it refresh every month. So I will not be putting your name on the list in, unless you tell me to. And up underneath these printable videos will be an opportunity to say, hey, please put me on the list. Or up underneath any of those Woe Is She videos. Um, here are the past, I found these the other day. And someday I'll string them all together if, we, if anybody wants the whole set. Here's the past, I got these out last night to help me with, um, this month's poster, so I can kind of remember what were all the parts and pieces and elements of it. Here's the past printables. Super September. Super September. The great fall of sugar, flour, and binging. Let's see here. Uh oh. Awesome October. Express, not ingest. Neat November, staying surrendered. Dazzling December, a new thing has begun. January, seek first his kingdom. That's Matthew 16, 33. Feb, who are we? And then, I am a child of God. And then there's March. I didn't, I just realized I did not have March. And then the she did it poster that I made. This is where the she, what was she began surrendered, hydrated, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Thanks again, Katie. Katie carried the torch. When I said, I'm not gonna do this anymore, oh my gosh, God has led me, he's led me off this printable hook. Um, 
she did February and March. Um, let's march um, forward. The saints go marching in. And then that, um, what was she? This is funny, by the way. I just listed all those from memory. My memory's not perfect. Some of these, if, if any of you have gone through these, they are, a couple of them are not the verses I thought they were going to be, but like I've said before, all verses of the Bible are good verses. Some are just super random. Um, so, I thought that was funny. When I went through that little checklist, I was like, oh, this is not what I thought. I think Proverbs 1-1, one, one, I think I meant to put in there a Psalm, I don't, Psalm 1-1, one, one, I don't even know, but I'm human, so none of this is perfect. Um, woe is she... That came about because my testimony is woe is me, willing, obedient, engaged. Philippians 2.14, do all things without complaining or arguing. And let me encourage you, when you look back on your past, feel nothing but grateful, no matter what. Count it all as joy, the tests, the trials, the tribulations. If God allowed you to experience it, well, if you experienced it, he allowed you to experience it. And if he allowed you to experience it, he allowed you to experience it with purpose. Isaiah 66, 9. Do I not bring bring forth to the point of delivery without giving birth? Something along those lines. His point is, pain has purpose. Romans 8, 28. God is working all things out for those called according to his purpose. Trust me when I say, if you've experienced it, whether it was testing from the enemy or, excuse me, tempting from the enemy or testing from God or just a rough period or a dark period, you experienced it for a reason. People say God won't give you more than you can handle. That's not true. He gives us way more than we can handle. And sometimes I think those rough seasons are to illustrate that for us. They're a demonstration that this is, I tap out, I surrender, I surrender. This is way, way too much. Okay, so, without further ado, by the way, that's a misinterpretation of 1 Corinthians 10, 13, which is um, God saying he will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. There's no temptation yet what is common to man, and he will always give us a way out. He won't allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear, but he will give us way more than we can handle way more than we can handle. And that is ultimately, I think in large part, so that we all know the glory goes back to him. Colossians 1.16, we were created by him and for him. It's all him. Galatians 2.20, Paul saying, it's no longer I who live, it's Christ who lives in me. It's literally him. Okay, April, April. Now this is what I loved about that conversation with that man just now because he was keeping it real. There was no small talk happening up in that waiting room. He was keeping it real. He was telling me about, uh, and he was saying it very matter of fact, and he's very intelligent. He was talking about traveling to China five or six times a year and the things he started to witness about no longer being able to use cash, Visa, or MasterCard. He could only use an app. He couldn't buy a burger. On, he couldn't buy a burger at the airport without an app on his phone. They also started doing some social credits and discredits some sanctioning individually yes we sanction countries but sanctioning people individually if they were to um, engage in certain apps or certain websites this would be a negative mark for them and they even started to implement ringtones on people's phones without their permission so that while they're in the subway their phone might ring and everyone would be alerted uh oh this is someone that we need to outcast from society so he was sharing with me the very real reality of what it's like in other countries right now. Let's don't take what we have for granted. And let's be spirit led to fight for it. I'm dressed in all black today. I'm feeling kind of ninja. I want to work for the Lord, Colossians 3.23, not for man. So anyways, I love the big dose of reality he just gave me. Ape real. All right. You're going to see the poster here in just a minute. Ape real. April. So let's keep in mind all month long. And one of my favorite things to do is to um, deliver the truth. Speak in love. That's in Ephesians chapter 4, I think, verse 11. Speak the truth in love. 
God does not give us a spirit of fear. 1 Timothy 4.12, am I getting that right? He gives us a spirit of strength and power and self-discipline. Let me look that up. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in love, in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Okay, that's an excellent verse, and that's hanging above Charlie's bed. I gave him do I gave him a framed nope, a friend of mine gave him that framed when he was a little bitty boy. The spirit of God does not give us a spirit of timidity. It's in Timothy. I want to find it. Uh-huh. Second Timothy 1:7. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. So I like to share the truth, and I like to encourage people not to operate from a spirit or a place, a position of fear. That's from the enemy. That's going to change our behavior, change our decisions, and change our willingness to, to, mm, to move forward. I want us moving forward, willing, obedient, engaged, surrendered, hydrated, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Not empowered by us. I tell people, don't be strong. Be surrendered. Be surrendered. Let the power of God do the work. Do the talking. Luke 12, 12. The Holy Spirit will give you the words when you need them. John 14, 26. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything. Let's hang our hats on those promises. Let's actually believe them. Let's be so bold and brave and courageous and faith-filled as to believe that. What if we believed what God was saying? So ape real. You're going to see it on the poster. God is real. And if God is real, then what God tells us is real. And God tells us that Satan is real. John 10, 10, he comes, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I want us focusing in April about the realness of God and the realness of the enemy. Spiritual warfare is real. Scripture tells us, God tells us in Scripture, that if you can see it, it's temporary. Only what the eye cannot see is eternal. That's why when I give food out, I want to make sure I'm doing it in the name of Jesus so that while I'm meeting physical needs, God will also use me to meet spiritual needs because while I care about your body, I care more about your soul. Your spirit is going to spend eternity somewhere and I want to do all I can while we're on this sinking ship called earth to get as many souls to heaven as possible. I tell people good without God is just making people comfortable here on earth and there's so many people that you can see. They focus on kindness, they focus on goodness, they focus on identity. 1 Peter 4, 1 Peter 4, 25. 1 Peter 1, 25, let me check. Okay, there were some ones and fours in there. 1 Peter 1, 24, we are flowers quickly fading. Let's don't identify with a flower quickly fading. Let's realize that who we are and what we are is a spirit. And if you've accepted Christ, John 1, 12, then you have the privilege of, be, of being called a child of God. We're all image bearers. We were all made in the image of God, but not all of us are children of God, not until we choose to be. So there's a very real reality that God is real and Satan is real, which is why we need to put on the armor of God. The illustrations on this poster are the six armors of God with a verse next to each one, um, and then a little heart of John 16:33. My idea and my hope is that if you will, if you want to, if the Spirit leads you to, read each of these verses and then color in as you go this little armor of God. Elena, I hope you love this. I thought of you. You are my armor of God inspiration, girl. You and your daughters, you, you know how important it is to put on the armor of God. We are battling the good news is the war has been won. Jesus said it on the cross. The, fi the final thing he said after he spoke to the person on the cross next to him, the two, the two men that were dying alongside him being crucified, he told one of them, today you will be with me in paradise. He asked God, he said, oh, take this cup from me, but Lord, your will be done. Your will be done. 
and after he took a drink of the the wine, the vinegar from the the hyssop, the sponge, the hyssop plant, they raised it up to him. He was thirsty and he took a drink of this vinegar and then he he said, it is finished. That is good news. The war has been won, but we are still battling. Ephesians 6, 12, we are not battling flesh and blood. We are battling principles of the heavenly realm. Our enemies are not our enemies. The enemy is the enemy. And there's two types of people working for him, those who realize it and those who don't. So during the month of April, we're gonna focus on God and how real he is. If you don't know him or how real he is, I pray that this month you will open your eyes, your mind and your heart to him. Get to know him. Years ago, I wrote a sermon called Relationship. And I talked about how I know that God is real and it's because I've been in a relationship with him for decades now. I can't take credit for this quote, but Ray Comfort with Living Water Ministries. Check it out on YouTube. It's awesome. Living Water Ministries with Ray Comfort. He said, no one could convince me that my mom is not real. No one could convince me that my cousin is not real because I'm in a relationship with them and I won't deny their reality. Ray Comfort has a movie called, it's a 30 minute movie, I think, something like that, God versus Evolution. I highly recommend that. He also has a, vi a movie about him called The Fool, Banana Man. Check that out. I recommend checking it out. It's pretty impressive. And if you don't know God and you're questioning his reality, I have a true story for you to watch. It's called A Case for Christ. It's a true story of a reporter, a journalist, whose wife came to know Christ. And he was like, this is crazy. This is too much. I don't know what's happening. I am going to investigate. And he did. He investigated aiming to disprove the reality of God and he came to know the truth. John 14, 6, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through him. There's actually so much hard evidence about Jesus and his life that really the only debate is whether or not he was telling the truth. There are loads of other lowercase G-O-Ds. In fact, in Hinduism, I recently read, they accept as many as 330 million other gods. Only one came back to life. There's only one true God. Linked below is gonna be an article with lots of verses about God being the only true God. There are many ways to Jesus, but there's only one way to heaven, and that is Jesus. Like we read in the book of John last week, he is the gate, we must pass through him. So let me encourage you as you head out on this April adventure with us to be meditating on, pondering, enjoying, relishing the realness of God. And as we focus on the realness of God, I'd also like us to challenge ourselves to make a 30-day commitment for one tiny little real change we can make in our life. We can make a very real difference by making a very simple change to something in our life. One little habit to make sure we're headed in the right direction in a certain area of our life. Below every woe is she video is a video that I've uh, called the high five. When I was pregnant with Franklin 10 years ago, I realized there's five areas of our life that if we can make sure these are headed in the right direction, we're, we're in pretty good shape. God, rest, water, nutrition, activity in that very particular order. Okay, I just ran into Office Max and got my poster that they scanned in for me. I've got it on a little jump drive. I can create a printable, a link to a free printable in the description below. God, rest, water, nutrition, activity. So as we focus on how real God is and how real Satan is and how real spiritual warfare is, let's also focus, like I said, on a very real difference we can make just by making a few small changes. So the printables are an opportunity to, excuse me, this is loud and cold. Um, the printables are an opportunity to um, focus for a period of time. I like bookends on 
goals. I used to be a professional goal writer when I taught special education. I want all of us to start where we are and level up from there. So maybe in one of these five areas, um, but just for a period of time, not indefinitely. For one thing, it's like fasting. We don't fast forever. We fast for a period of time so that God can, we can focus on God and we can um, allow parts of our hearts or our minds or our bodies to heal. It's not something that we do forever. So for the month of April, and I've got the poster right here. I'm going to show you in just a second. Um, let's think of these five areas. Maybe pick one of these five areas. God, maybe you want to be in the word daily for 30 days. A commitment means you commit to do it even when you don't want to. That's why it's wonderful that little check marks are dopamine releasing because it's motivating to get that check mark. So maybe you want to be in the word daily. Maybe you want to be in the word as in Jesus is the word. John 1 1. God was the word. He was with the word. He is. God is the word. Jesus is the word. John 15 Five. He's the vine, we are the branches. We must abide in Him and remain in Him. How else could we be obedient to Him if we couldn't even hear Him? So maybe you want to be in the literal Word, which I highly recommend. Hebrews 4.12, the Word is alive and active. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. It can penetrate bone and it can divide bone and marrow, soul and spirit. And it can read our thoughts and our attitudes. Earlier today, I was scribbling down notes for this video and I stuck it in my Bible. I did not mean to, but I stuck it right here. Hebrews 4.12, there it is. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of our hearts. This is the word. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without nothing was made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. I've said many times in these videos that when my Bible's open, I almost feel like butterflies are flying out of it. Even if I'm not reading it, I like to have it open near me in the kitchen, wherever. I don't always, but I love to. So maybe you want to be in the Word daily, just one verse, maybe one chapter, or maybe you want to be in the Word as in Jesus, where you pray daily, where you start your day like I heard an older woman say. She starts her day saying, Lord, help me, help me, help me, and she goes to bed saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Around Thanksgiving time, we focus on gratitude. A lot of people have gratitude journals, but I like to think during the time of Thanksgiving, who are we thankful to? Let's don't just be thankful. Let's be thankful to the one giving the gifts. So we might start our day every day saying a prayer of thank you to God. Not just writing it in a journal, not just being grateful. It's a wonderful place to be. It's filled with gratitude. It's a great place to head out into the world grateful. Like I said, even for all of our perceived negative experiences, don't get me wrong, some of them are horrific and terrifying, but this life here on earth is marked with, with pain and work. Pain has purpose, and when we are finished with the work, getting a call, when the work is done, we're done. If you're still living and breathing, you have work to do. So maybe we start our day with not just gratitude, but a prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, give thanks in all circumstances, and pray without ceasing. This is the will of God for you. Pray without ceasing just means constant conversation. That's how we get close to people. There's some people we talk to every 10 years, maybe at a reunion. There's some people we talk to every five years, maybe at a Christmas gathering. There's some people we talk to once a year, once a month, but the people that we are closest to, I've talked to my husband probably 15 times today. We're in constant conversation. Let's be that close. Let's have that kind of relationship with God. Constant conversation. God, rest. Maybe you want to go to bed earlier, get up earlier. Maybe you want to be like, maybe, maybe you are like me and you want to be more like people that put on pajamas and brush their teeth before they go to bed. A lot of times I just fall over, fall asleep, and wake up and get going again. Maybe you want to take your phone, your screen, and put it in the other room. 
God rest. Water. I drink a gallon of water a day. I'm pretty good there. But maybe you want to drink half a gallon a day, 64 ounces or 20 ounces, or swap one sugary drink for some water just for 30 days. Nutrition. Is there something you'd like to add to your diet for 30 days or take away for 30 days? And finally, activity. 15 minutes, 10 minutes, get a timer. I use lots of kitchen timers and there's a timer in the microwave. But 15 minutes decluttering a certain room, what a difference that would make. 10 minutes getting some fresh air and going for a walk. Get some activity. I'll share with you now, what I'm gonna focus on are two different things and I've already mentioned them. I'm gonna wake up every day and I'm gonna aim to, you know, I might take my little, since I'm doing two things, take my little squares, my little check marks and draw a line down the middle. So I'm, I'm reminded that there's two things I'm aiming for every day. Number one, I wanna wake up and thank God specifically for answered prayers. He and I are together. We've been walking together closely for years and years and years. I say the footprints prayer for me is more like the butt prints prayer at, at times. You know, at the end of that prayer, they say, but Lord, at one point there was only one set of footprints. And he said that my child is when I carried you. I've jokingly said before, I would ask God, but Lord, at one point there was a set of footprints and a long line. And he said that my child is when I drug you. He and I have been through some rough stuff. I don't hang out in what I call the middle ground of misery. Things have gotten so bad and so dark and I've been so desperate that God led me to um, take action and get things headed in the right direction. So I am grateful for all of that because it gives me empathy and perspective and it makes me very grateful for today and how great things are. But I'm not always the best at thanking God. I ask him all the time for so much. And John 15, 7, if we will abide in him, if we will remain in him, then we will be given all that we ask for in Jesus' name. That means we have the mind of Christ. So what we're asking for is the will of God. But I'm not so great at telling him thank you for that. So I want to wake up every day and thank him for the health that I constantly pray for, for um, bringing my family members back home safely. I ask for these things, he does them, and I'm thrilled, and I go right on about my day. I want to start thanking him. I'm going to wake up every day thanking him for all the answered prayers and thanking him for today. What I like about these printables is they are a daily practice. Matthew 6, 11, give us our daily bread. God has set our life up. The sun sets and it rises. It sets and it rises. He has set us up to need things daily. The other thing I'm going to do is put pajamas on and brush my teeth every night before I go to bed. That's my commitment. That's what I'm committing to do for 30 days. I think that'll have a positive overall effect on me. And it will set me up to be better rested for the next day. Instead of just going and going and going and going until I fall over. And then wake up and go again. So those are my two. Please comment below if you're joining us. Let us know what your goal is going to be for April and let me know if you'd like for me to add you to the woe is she list. All this means is that you'll be prayed for daily for the month of April. So that's about it. I'm going to show you this poster, go through a couple of these verses and um, let's just keep this real and let's keep it real simple. Let's don't muddy the waters don't let let's don't complicate things the gospel which means good news is simple we are sinners living in a dark world in desperate need of a savior to light the way and the good news is we have one his name is Jesus amen okay so amazing April there's the woe is she up there April, God is real. Spiritual warfare is real. So let's put on the armor of God. And like I said, there are seven verses here. There's John 16, 33. Take heart, I have overcome the world. No need to worry. And it's a sin if we worry anyways. By the way, John, uh, Jesus, not John, Jesus tells us specifically in Matthew Matthew, nope, not seven. Matthew six. Oh, I'm on the right page. Jesus tells us not to worry. 
Do not worry, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And then down here it says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. John 16, 33. I have overcome the world. That's what Jesus tells us. We're still battling, but the war has been won. No need to worry. That's unproductive. Yes, concern yourself with many things. Concern means to be about. I definitely concern. I'm concerned about stuff. Highly concerned about a few things. But I'm not worried. Let's don't worry. All right, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. That talks about spiritual warfare, and it talks about the armor of God. And it talks about all these different pieces of the armor of God. The sword, the belt, the breastplate, the footings, the shield, and the helmet of salvation. Each one of those. It's spiritual. We need to put on spiritual armor for spiritual warfare. Makes sense, doesn't it? Now, in Ephesians, I'm going to tell you right now, here's a special request. At the end of Ephesians chapter 6, Actually, it's verses 19 and 20. This is Paul speaking. And I'm not even going to read it right now. I'm going to let you, if you so desire. It's Paul asking for prayer. And please know that I am asking for the same prayer. But I couldn't say it any better than Paul does. Please pray for me. As I minister to others in the name of Jesus, please pray for me. Paul says it really well, and I'd like to just use his prayer to ask you for prayer. It's lovely. James 4, 8, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. That's what God tells us. 1 Kings 18, 39. In my Bible reading group, we just finished reading 1 Kings. Chapter 18 is about Elijah and Obadiah and Ahab. I think I'm getting all that right. And at one point, Elijah challenges Ahab. And he says, okay, you've got all these gods hundreds of them. You've got prophets for Baal, B-A-A-L. He says, I challenge you. Let's get calves. Let's cut them up. Let's put them on the fire. And whoever's God starts a fire is the real God. Well, these prophets for Baal, this false God, they were desperate. I highly recommend reading 1 Kings chapter 18. So these prophets of Baal were getting pretty desperate because nothing was happening. They were wanting to prove that their God was real. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one of the bulls and prepare it. First, since there are so many of you call on the name of your God, but do not light the fire. So they took the bull given to them and prepared it. Spoiler alert, nothing happened. God, the one true God, did light the fire for Elijah. And in verse 39, when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. God is real. Which is exactly what Jesus says in John 17, 3. In John 9, 39, Jesus talks about spiritual blindness. And he talks about that if you are blind, then you will see. For judgment, I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Heaven is not full of arrogant people that said, prove yourself to me, God. Years ago, I heard, most things we have to see to believe, but with God we believe and then we start to see. And if we choose over and over and over and over to keep our minds and our eyes and our hearts shut, 
God will hand us over to that spiritual blindness and make us permanently spiritually blind. So I pray over the month of April that you will see God. It's not a coincidence. On Monday, I prayed with the girl at the salon and she cried, but just before that, I had come right here to the YMCA. I'm at the YMCA now. I'm hoping I have time to get in a couple miles before I head home and get my husband's vehicle. But a woman here was laughing about something and it reminded me of Proverbs 35, 31, 25. And I said, yes, girl, laugh without fear of the future. And she stopped kind of serious. She's in her seventies, a sweet lady. And she said, Emily, I believe God gave you that verse for me. And I was like, oh, awesome. We were grabbing our weights in a back room hustling because class started at nine and it was 903 so I said I've got something for you I gave her another one of those bracelets and when I gave it to her she said to me and she grabbed my arm she said I'm really going through something and I said okay like sort of reassuring like I hear ya and she said I prayed to God for a sign I got goosebumps and I said well here you go it's between you and God I don't know if this is your sign I said, but it might be. I'm literally giving you the word, and Jesus is the word. So I told her, it's all him. I'm conduit. I'm a vessel, and I am more than happy to be. Maybe you've been looking for a sign, and maybe this is it. Maybe not. I don't know. That's between you and God. But keep your mind and your heart open in the month of April. When you see how dark and twisted this world is, question that if something seems morally wrong if some people seem to be passionate about one thing but not nearly passionate enough about things that seem like they should matter than they more than they do to a lot of people question that question that Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. That's Matthew 7, 7. Ask and you shall receive. If you want wisdom, ask for it. He gives it to us generously. That's James 1, 5. There's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Wisdom we can gain on our own. Excuse me. Knowledge we can gain on our own. Through books and internets and the internet. Internets. Wisdom has to be given to us. If you want it, pray for it, ask for it, and you shall receive. And I pray that this month you'll see God. I heard a preacher say the dark is so dark right now. The darkness is so dark. There's potential for light to shine brighter than ever, which is why. Here we go from John 9, 39, talking about blindness and sight to Isaiah 5, 20. Oh my gosh, here I am. Sorry, that was supposed to be faced this way. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. This is Isaiah 520. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who have it backwards and twisted. Let me encourage you to spend the month of April realizing with real eyes. Let's real eyes. Let's open our eyes to the goodness of God and the darkness of the enemy and the stark contrast between the two that I find very invigorating and motivating to get to work to roll up my sleeves and get to work. If you're starting to think maybe there's something wrong with this world, maybe some people have it backwards, maybe things that you always believed in aren't seeming so right lately. You might be ready for a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift is where with just a little bit more information, a little bit more data, we can all of a sudden see things in an entirely different light. I've shared a couple examples before 
What if I told you there was a little old woman getting on a bus and there was a man sitting in a seat and he would not give her his seat? Now, wouldn't that sound awful? Would you agree with most people that he should give her his seat? That would be the right thing to do. What if I told you he was the bus driver? That's a paradigm shift when all of a sudden you realize, oh, well, never mind. I had a little bit more data and I can see things very differently now. What if I told you a man yelled at his wife and then punched her in the face? Would you call him a loving husband? Probably not. But what if I told you he yelled at his wife, watch out, because there was a man coming to get her in a parking lot and he punched her in the face because he accidentally punched her in the face while he was fighting this man off of her. He got her away from him and he takes excellent care of his loving wife and he's a wonderful husband. That's a paradigm shift when you have just a little bit more information and you can see things entirely differently. My prayer is that over the month of April, we will make a real difference in our life by making very small, simple changes in the way we operate. But we will also focus on the realness of God and the realness of spiritual warfare and be grateful and move forward, confident in Him, confident in Him that the war has already been won. Let's get to work with a sense of urgency. I love you dearly. Please comment below. Let me know if you are joining us and what your goal's gonna be. And um, if we can add you to the woe is she list. That's it for now. I am going to get rolling here. My son called. He's babysitting little siblings. He's probably had enough of that. I'm going to get my husband's car to the dealership and I'm going to earn some steps. I'm going to walk until my watch buzzes. I love y'all dearly. We will talk again soon. Bye. I just got home. Here's Thomas feeding all these calves. Look how cute they are. They're all so hungry. Yes, I'm at this dealership editing this video. If you've never seen these printables before, the little water droplet next to each check mark box, that's just what that is, it's a water droplet. So if one of your goals is water, to get your water in, you can just color in that water droplet. And then maybe have another goal to check for the check mark, check box, check mark box. <laughs> so I'm gonna split my little box in two. I'm going to commit to saying thank you to God every morning, putting on pajamas and brushing my teeth at night, and then getting my gallon in every day. And when I get my gallon in, I'll color in that little water droplet. That's all, goodbye. I better get out of here before someone joins me.